Thank you, brother. <laughs> okay, today's uh, September 22nd of the year 2016. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So nice to see all of these reflections of myself showing up. Um, wow. <laughs> I'm levitating. <laughs> How many of you are feeling super galactic right now? <laughs> Just barely hanging on to Mother Earth. <laughs> yes, this is uh, an extraordinary time to be alive, to be present, to be dancing our dreams awake on planet Earth with one another with seven plus billion of us on the planet. This has never happened before. So we wake up each day and look around, and things look ordinary, but uh, they're quite extraordinary. <laughs> um, as you know, we reached a significant marker today with the uh, fall equinox. Uh, have any of you heard uh, my last talk or were here for my last talk? Just a few of you. Well, the uh, significant turn in the matrix occurred with Jupiter just having entered Libra into the higher octave zone of the natural wheel from Libra through the sign of Pisces. We begin to expand our awareness out toward the greater sphere of experience with others. And today, with the sun having entered Libra, it's actually activating the uh, Jupiter and Jupiter's entrance into Libra with our being aware of the shift from the mer Mercury ray of application of our talent and ability in the ordinary experience of life to the Venusian ray of the beauty way. So many may now really begin to feel on a very personal level this shift to the inner beauty of our being being shared with another. Uh, the fall equinox occurred at, at 7.22 a.m. this morning, uh, which in Mount Shasta and all in the, in the entire Pacific uh, time zone gives uh, the chart for Mount Shasta, the equinox, uh, a Libra rising with Jupiter conjunct Maki Maki, a newly discovered planetoid beyond Pluto, right on the ascendant. So since early this morning, um, we have now entered a new wave, the love wave of the Venusian realm. And Venus herself, who is ordinarily deeply personal and related to our capacity to really connect to others in a loving, harmonious, and appreciative way, is carrying much more of a universal and galactic signature than she usually does because of the way in which the other planets are aligned, particularly Jupiter in Libra. The sign of Libra is ruled by Venus. So Jupiter himself is looking to Venus as his guide. Saturn's in Sagittarius. Saturn's looking to Jupiter as his guide. And Pluto's in Capricorn. So Pluto's looking to Saturn as his guide. So you see, you feel these incredible um, celestials who carry tremendous transpersonal power forming a relationship through to one another that looks to Venus as their guide, and Venus is, is their teacher now on the personal level. So this Venusian wave, the, the, it has set in motion uh, a cycle that will fundamentally be anchored through the winter solstice, with Venus being emphasized as the guide through which we gain greater understanding of the transcendent nature of our being. 
Um, not only that, <laughs> uh, Jupiter and Maki Maki are very close to the what's called the supergalactic center. The supergalactic center has recently been discovered as a massive black hole around which our own Milky Way galaxy and many other galaxies evolve. And by precession, the supergalactic center entered Libra, the sign of Libra, about um, in, in the early 50s, 1950s. So this suggests that for the last, for the 1,100 years before, preceding that, humanity itself has been through a teaching or an opportunity to develop a sense of selfhood. And since the 1950s, with the supergalactic center having progressed into Libra, we've entered into the phase of human development in which we begin to understand the nature of our relationship to one another as mirror selves. So this particular signature, which is always in the background, deeply at the very core of our soul's development, is now being activated by this Jupiter Maki Maki conjunction uh, that uh, just occurred on the 19th for the next 12 years. So you can feel how important and significant this particular fall equinox with the sun having entered, just entered Libra, combining with Jupiter and Maki Maki, giving us the first signal of this next 12 year phase of the beauty way evolving and unfolding to set the tone for the female powers, Lakshmi behind me here, <laughs> beginning to gain ascendancy in our global awareness. So it's interesting that in anticipation of that, we have the first female president, presidential candidate, possibly becoming our president, creating a bridge to that, the power of the female, leading the way. So aside from that, if that weren't enough, <laughs> we have Uranus, the Awakener, conjunct a newly discovered mini planet beyond the orbit of Pluto called Eris. Anybody aware of this newly discovered planet, 2005? Eris is the next octave above Pluto. Pluto and Uranus combined in the 60s to awaken a whole new wave of consciousness emerging on the planet from the 60s onward. And now Uranus and Eris are combining the next octave above Pluto. But the, the next octave above the 60s is now beginning to make itself known on the planet as it did in the 60s, setting a whole new wave of consciousness in, in the motion. And that's, this is the second of three Uranus-Eris conjunctions. Um, on the 25th of uh, September. So combining the jupiter Maki Maki conjunction, uranus Eris conjunction, all within the same window of time, these supergalactic transcendental archetypes or portals are being anchored into planetary consciousness in a way which we've never seen before. This uranus Eris conjunction will um, be fully activated by March of 2017. So in the chart of the fall equinox, which like I said, anchors the matrix of the next three months until the winter solstice, we also have another galactic signature, <laughs> a third one. Uh, having been activated with Mars conjunct the our own Milky Way's galactic center and another um, transcendental quoar conjunct the galactic center along with Mars so we're, we're, the, the underlying feeling here is that we have influences and levels of awareness and consciousness that are so far expanded beyond our ordinary concept of what's 
what we as human beings are capable of doing. We may feel somewhat disoriented by it. And in this, like, uh, in this uh, zone of, of uh, opening to new possibilities that we have never even been able to conceive or imagine before. How many of you are feeling that way right now? That we're like in this, like, really wild, open uh, sphere of all possibilities becoming known and made aware to us in our personal sphere. And we're not quite sure how or where to anchor within it. The beauty of this chart is that Mercury has just gone direct and stationed direct, and Pluto's at a dead standstill right now in Capricorn, Mercury being in Virgo, his own sign. And they're exactly trying one another. So this offers the opportunity in the Earth signs to feel anchored through our capacity to to be of service to one another, to find a meaningful way, Pluto and Capricorn within the present matrix, to be a transforming influence upon ourselves and others through the giveaway that we do, emphasized now in bringing beauty, love, harmony, and appreciation of one another into the world. This can be in a physical way or a psychological or spiritual way. Whenever we have an influence upon one another in a way which brings us, brings the person we're relating to into more uh, greater appreciation of themselves and the beauty they have to offer to, to us or the world at large, we act as a healing influence upon their lives which brings us into greater harmony with the capacity to experience the beauty within ourselves. So, how many of you feeling are feeling like love is in the air? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, and, and uh, with Maki Maki, Maki Maki was the creator god of the um, Rapa Nui culture. And uh, Maki Maki kind of rhymes with Anunnaki, <laughs> uh, <laughs> creator gods and I feel like I kind of got this wild message about uh, Rapa Nui uh, being kind of like a uh, retreat center for the Anunnaki and where they had their liaisons and their love affairs and they were like uh, <laughs> removed from the Middle East and they could just kind of go a little wild for a while so there is with Jupiter conjunct Maki Maki and Libra rising here in Mount Shasta along the west coast, there's kind of a wildness in the air about our overcoming our reservations, moving beyond our boundaries, and allowing love to penetrate and impact our lives in ways which we, we had, may not have allowed before. The medicine gift of Libra in pulling us beyond ourselves is through the Venus's power of attraction. When we're attracted to someone or something, and that attraction goes deeply enough, we are then drawn or tricked to move beyond the, the safety of our ordinary expected lives into a zone where we cannot any longer control the outcome. And that possibility then opens up the opportunity to more deeply experience ourselves through the eyes of another. And this doesn't have to be a sexual or emotional relationship. It can be a relationship to a task or a medicine task of some kind also. Um, Venus is right at the very end of, of uh, Libra right now in her own sign. She's been there for about three weeks. So we've gotten a, a, a nice runway up to this ship today. So Venus, when Venus changes sign, it, it, it's uh, normally felt on a very personal level. But because of what I mentioned earlier in this talk, when Venus changes sign now to the end of, of next year, she will have a much more uh, profound effect, not only on our personal lives, but on the collective psyche of the entire human race. And Venus will... Uh, shift into Scorpio 
tomorrow morning at 7.51 a.m. And uh, <clears throat> Venus in the Scorpio is looking to Pluto as her guide. So we see now that Venus forms a relationship to Pluto, Saturn, and Jupiter, Jupiter to Venus, and we have this circuit of energy that's forming. It's profoundly transforming. And uh, I got a little uh, download about Scorpio being a very passionate sign, the uh, Hayoka of passion. And what I mean by Hayoka, it's a Native American term, indigenous term, of the trickster nature of the spirit. Sometimes the spirit will trick us to move beyond our boundaries in ways that we had not imagined. And, the, and it'll appear as its opposite so that we are moved beyond our safety zone to dive deeper into the opportunity for transformation and evolution in our lives. So uh, passion itself is a, uh, is a goal that we have on a personal or collective level, but it's also something we fear. Because once we become passionate about something, it may overwhelm our reservations and draw us beyond the boundaries of our own safety and security into the unknown. And when Venus is in Scorpio, she's dancing with the Kundalini fire, serpent fire, the awakening of that passion and that power within us to touch deeply within ourselves and connect to the core of our own vital force, our own life energy. And we can use or call someone in to become the agent of transformation through evoking that passion within us. Passion um, has the consequence of igniting the light within. The first glimpse of one's own immortality when we experience passion at, at a great intensity, there's an immortal or timeless quality about it. Time collapses into singularity, and we become connected to a deeper, more profound aspect of our own being. So this, this coming phase through the middle of, uh, of uh, October could be an opportunity for are diving deeper into the core of our own awakening through passionate encounters with one another that awaken the Kundalini and transform our being and give us the opportunity to expand the boundaries of the known for us on a personal level. Um, so Venus remains in Scorpio until October 18th. <clears throat> so between now, between tomorrow morning and October 18th, the Venus and Scorpio transit phase may be pretty wild uh, and intense on a personal level. And when you realize the Hayoka of passion entering your life, realize you're, have, you're calling a person or event or group of people in to offer you the opportunity to, tra to transcend your, the boundaries of the known within your own life, through which then you can experience the core or depth within yourself you hadn't known before. So how many of you are already feeling that intensity building? Yeah. And when you understand the Hayoka nature of passion, you no know, you know longer fear it, because you realize that it's calling you to, to move beyond your comfort zone in order to realize a power or depth within you you hadn't possibly experienced before, through which then you can arise or rise to the occasion from a depth of integrity and personal empowerment that reveals the strength and capacity within you to transform any event or experience or relationship you have with the outer world. The fear of passion is that you'll be trapped by it, over overwhelmed by it, that it'll become your your master. When you connect with your core and you awaken to your personal power, you realize that you are 
capable then of riding the dragon, and he or she can take you to realms you had not even imagined before. So I, I have a feeling that in October, the natives are going to go a little wild. <laughs> <laughs> And we may see this uh, kind of demonstrated in kind of a, a funny way with the first presidential debate. <laughs> it's going to be, you know, wow. Like we've never seen anything like this happen before. Mm -hmm. So with this particular uh, astrological signature, I'm feeling that these supergalactic potentials that have normally been far beyond the level of human consciousness are being made, made available to us through very deep personal relationship to one another that open up awareness of these greater potentials on the more supergalactic level. In other words, the gods and goddesses are coming down to earth and grounding themselves within the arena of human relationship. So if you're feeling like you're personal contacts and your human relationships are gaining much more weight and significance than usual. It's because all of this energy that is usually far beyond the consciousness of the ordinary human is seeking to ground itself in the arena of human relationship. So watch carefully who you call in. There are no accidents with this. It seems like destiny is at play. So whoever shows up to light that match, or light that fire, to awaken or activate your kundalini is, a, is by mutual agreement. So that you can dance in, into a greater depth within yourself in understanding of the nature of life and, and, and the enjoyment of life itself. Because Venus is about appreciating and enjoying yourself primarily, first of all, and then sharing that love and appreciation with one other or more than one other selves your mirror selves. So the beauty way is really be becoming the way through which we gain a deeper understanding of ourselves and one another through the end of next year. And do we have any other astrologers here? Um, so if you want to, if anyone else wants to add to this, um, uh, you know, the comments are open. Uh, otherwise, does anybody have any questions at this point? Some of us here are from the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Will this same wildness and opportunity to um, ignite be available worldwide? Or is it just the West Coast? Uh, this with this particular chart, it's really focused here on the West Coast. And uh, the East Coast would be three hours later, so you would have Scorpio rising there in the fall equinox chart, which would um, <laughs> make it even more t intense. There's like a contest for power <clears throat> going on, and we're seeing that you know reflected in the presidential elections. Yeah. With what you say about Venus and Scorpio, mm -hmm. if you're a Scorpio, is it even going to be loud? Uh, yes, particularly. Um, <laughs> through October. I can't think anymore. But, uh, for those with a sun or moon in Scorpio, you've already been through like a three-year test that ended up, you know, about mid-year. I don't think 20. it ended. Yeah. yeah. It accelerated. So, yeah. It, uh, the, when Saturn was in Scorpio uh, last, you know, three three years, uh, it, it was really testing the the integrity around the right use of passion and power for those with Scorpio emphasis. But you guys are now, it's beginning to lighten up a little bit, so. <laughs> but wherever Venus, wherever Venus is, she, she offers the opportunity to really lighten up on yourself and recognize your inner power and beauty. So uh, Venus and Scorpio uh, is more of an opportunity to awaken to the core beauty that you carry. And, and how you can actually touch one another, uh, touch another person in a deeply passionate, uh, life-affirming way. Go ahead. So if we're, um, if Jupiter is with Venus, you know, Jupiter's in 
Venus's sign, mm -hmm. and then Venus is going to come up and try and um, Neptune. Mm -hmm. So would you would you say that we're have an opportunity to really take that into a very spiritual arena with heightening compassion? Yes, um, <clears throat> Neptune is in Pisces, uh, around 11 degrees right now, and uh, as Mercury, as Venus enters Scorpio, she'll begin to, by sign, enter the, the trine value toward toward Neptune, and Venus uh, and Neptune is the higher octave of Venus, so this is a, a beautiful opportunity to experience transcendent love, because ne Neptune is actually the portal to the source. The, to the heavenly worlds, the greater love that's pouring out in an unconditional way through the source itself. Venus anchors that love into the human realm, into the human dimension. So they will be in harmonious resonance, particularly on the emotional and psychic levels, to draw the, the power that's pouring out from the source directly into the human experience of love in the awakening of the Kundalini, in the passions buried deeply within that are seeking to sh be shared and expressed and communicated with one another in a transforming way. So this should be a very, very you know, high opportunity to enter into deep emotional rapport that transforms and awakens the, the serpent fire within, the very vital force that gives us love to a new level of understanding of how we affect at a very deep level, at a soul level, one another. And that, that deeply that being deeply touched in an intimate way actually opens doors for healing and awakening in each other. So I would I would imagine that many of us will have opportunities to uh, more deeply be touched and be touched by one another than we ever have before. Uh, and this, and, and that being a healing modality through which we arrive at the next level of our personal evolution. And those of you in relationship already may find that that your relationships deepen in that capacity. And uh, the opportunity is there. The matrix is offering us this opportunity to finally have our eyes open and experience and see and feel one another at a greater depth than we've ever known before, offering a way forward that will empower us to alchemize our energies, our vital force, <clears throat> in, a, in an uplifting and transforming way to move the world forward with uh, the female powers leading the way. The men who may just get so tired and and confused as I give up. You know, you guys are in charge now. <laughs> we, we messed it up big time. And uh, I'm just going to put my hand in yours, and you can, it's now your time to lead the way. Show me the way home. <clears throat> are you guys ready for that? Yeah. <laughs> I think we're more than ready. <laughs> Any other uh, comments? Questions? Well, I can't think of a more beautiful way to celebrate <coughs> this Venusian love wave than to go dancing. So I'll be heading over to a Heartbeat Dance, and you guys are welcome to join us there, and uh, we can connect further there if you like. Thank you. Thank you.